hi everyone today's video i'm going to show you 20 things that you can make with your slow stitching pieces my name is sarah this is my hand embroidery channel sarah Humphrey embroidery welcome to today's video this video isn't going to be about how to do slow stitching because we have covered that in quite a lot of detail so do go and check out this video up here if you want to know all about slow stitching today's video i want to show you some things that you can make with it now slow stitching is really about the process of the actual stitching and not so much about what you end up with but I do know that a lot of you have been asking me what can you do with your slow stitching and it'd be really nice to turn these pieces into something with just a few easy extra steps and today's video I've got a little bit of help so I've got some help from Amanda so thank you Amanda for sending your slow stitches um, pieces in for me to share. So I've got lots of pieces on my table to show you. So let's explore some of the ideas that I have. So put them in a bit of an order and I've done them in the order that um, is easiest to make. We're going to get a little bit more complex as we go. So the easiest thing to make is just some squares of slow stitching. I've got a couple of squares here. What are they for? You ask. Um, so a couple of drink mats. Really, really easy to do. A couple of drink mats um, look really pretty. Something a little bit different. You do need to think about a couple of things though. You need to be able to wash it. They are going to get coffee stains on them and you need to not put anything extra on there that's um, going to catch on the mug. You need to put something on top so it needs to be nice and flat. So it's just a backing fabric. Just layered some fabrics up and gone back and forth all the way across. Held it together quite firmly because like I say, they will need to go in the washing machine and I haven't put any other decoration on them and you can use the same fabrics. You can have a matching set. You can make them round if you want to. You can make them square any shape you like. So just that um, to think about is that it's got to go in the wash and you want don't want anything extra on it because you're going to put your mug on top. So the second thing is just a bit more of a variation on those. So some square pieces of slow stitching like so, and they make really, really great greetings cards. I've just got a little one on there. Oops, that way around. And you can just use up your little scraps of fabric. Um, really great way to use those little leftover pieces. I've made them exactly the same way as the drinks mats. And I have just stuck them on with a bit of double sided. So if the person you were giving the cards who wanted to use it for something, a drink mat maybe, they can peel it off and use it. So they make really beautiful cards. Got two matching ones there. Got a slightly longer one there like so and there's one in progress so again just the backing fabric the material is applied on top just some stitching you can go mad with this you can put some embellishments on it because it's not going in the wash um, and really have a lot of fun with that so really great for greetings cards okay so number three a couple of bookmarks so nice longer thin ones now to go in your books you could make it the length that you want the book to go in and you need to keep these quite nice and flat because you're going to trap them between the pages so um, I've just done them that's that way up in quite delicate fabrics just one piece of backing fabric and a piece of lace and a little bit of stitching on it there haven't put anything on that because I don't want to damage the pages of the book so nice and thin nice fine materials for that is another one that I've done here with a bit of lace and some beautiful brocade fabric I put a little tassel that I've made on the bottom so you can see where your bookmark is so really really simple to do that one but just nice delicate fabrics so we've got some different shapes now and I've made some little face wipes these are a lot of fun to do you can use again those leftover materials that you've got I've got something different on the back now I've got a little bit of fleece um, because that's the nice side you want to use against your skin so you can use them as wipes you can apply cream with them anything like that face cleanser and they're just decorated it a little bit but again these will have to go in the wash so don't go mad with your embellishment on this <clears throat> but you can have a lot of fun with your stitches and just using up those leftover bits of fabric so while we're talking about face cleaning, I've got some little cloths here. Now this is partly where the idea of slow stitching comes from. There's some elements of this in slow stitchings and this is a Japanese art and this is the art of mending and they would use all their leftover cloths and they would layer them together when they're starting to wear out and they stitch over them and they make a new cloth and they would use these for cleaning um, as cleaning cloths which might sound a bit horrendous but they are really beautiful they're very tactile and they can go in the wash as well so really simple just leftover bits of fabric there stitched all the way up and down I'll show you a couple there's the back of that one you can make them any shape you like and any size you like as well and use up those leftover bits of fabric and make sure that they can go in the wash before I show you the next thing I just want to say a couple of thank yous because there's a lot of people support this channel and we really do appreciate it. It means we can carry on making high quality videos for you. So to those of you who have clicked the super thanks button this week I'd like to thank you very much. That is Carmela, Kay, Tineka, 
Karen, Mickey, Sarah and Ada. Thank you all so much for your contributions. So I've shown you a few easy flat things that you can make with your slow stitching. So let's look at something with a bit more dimension now. So I've made a couple of needle books to keep your needles in and I've just made the cover and if I undo them, you can see those. So the cover is the slow stitching, the piece of slow stitching is there. And then I've just put some pages inside with my needles in. So they make really beautiful covers. There's another one over here. We have a video on how I made this one on my other channel, Sarah Humphrey Creates. Do go and check that one out if you want to see the processes that were involved in this one. And the whole book has got some slow stitching and then I've just put the needles inside the pages. So I've done the cover and some of the pages as well and I've made it into a needle book. So you can use up all your really beautiful fabrics and really show off that lovely slow stitching. So we've made needle book covers. So what about actual book covers? I've made a couple of these. We have a video on how I made this one on this channel. This is my little African book and I'm just going to open that quickly and show you. So just folded the edge of your slow stitching over. So I've just made a really long piece, folded it over, fitted the cover inside there. There's the back cover and put a little bookmark in it as well. So they make really beautiful covers. You don't need to worry about your edging and turning your edges in. You can just use the raw edges and you can decorate the front however you like. You can go mad with that. This is another one that I made um, and I've got um, a video where I talk about this on my Create channel. I talk about different book covers and I show you a little look through that. But loads of different things on there. There's a bit of jewellery, some metal, um, some um, earrings there, a little bag on the front. So you really can go to town on the covers if you make a book cover. Really easy to form simple shapes with slow stitching. So this is a glasses case and I'm just going to show you this before it was sewn together and you can see the shape of it. It's just a square with the corners rounded off, two of the corners rounded off so I can get my glasses in and out. And um, all I've done is slow stitched that piece, folded in half, stitched along the bottom and stitched up the side to this point here. So I've got an opening for my glasses and I'll just show you that, fit in there nice and easily and I've just made the other side of that with some felt just to give it a bit of extra padding and this part was Jonathan's idea. <laughs> He's going to go on Dragon's Den and make our fortune with this one is his self-cleaning glasses case and he said why don't you line it with a glasses cleaning um, piece of fabric, a glass cleaning cloth. So that's that inside there and I've just lined it with that and sewn that inside. So whichever way you put your glasses in they get <laughs> cleaned on the way in and on the way out. Um, obviously you can only clean one side so We'll see how um, how much money that idea makes us, but really great idea. And just to sew that inside and have that lining so it doesn't catch on the stitches as well. And you've just got it padded a little bit as well because you've got that extra lay in there. And again, you can just have fun on the outside and decorate your glasses case. So talking about wrapping things inside other things, this is one from Amanda that Amanda sent me. She has a blog on how to make this, so view from our hill. I will put a link to her blog in the description below this video if you want to make these, but these are beautiful plant pot covers. She's um, found a wonderful way just to brighten up a, a normal horrible plastic plant plant pot with these beautiful slow stitching pieces. They look absolutely magnificent. They really look lovely. So do go and check her blog out if you're interested on how to make those. So once you see a few of these, you'll get some ideas of your own and what you can do with it. So we talked a little bit about padding. So what happens now if we make a shape and we stuff the shape? Really super easy to do. Here's my little pin cushion with my pins in. So just made a piece of slow stitching, another simple one on the back, two square pieces of fabric, sewn them together three quarters of the way around, stuffed them with some wadding, quite um quite stiff that wadding and I've made a little square in my slow stitching if you know now to put my pins in so you can just stick them through the the stitching but I've made that little bit blank because all my pins are going to go in there nice and solid um, really easy to make pin cushion. So while we're stuffing shapes, what else can we do with that? We can change the shapes. So I've got some little hearts here. These make really lovely scented hangers and I've actually got some lavender inside that's quite strong lavender inside this one um so i've stuffed it with the wadding and a little bit of lavender i didn't want the lavender running loose so what i have done is i've made a little bag for it you can see that in this picture here just a little um a tiny round shape and I've just drawn that shape up. I've put the lavender in there and then I've put it inside this sachet here and then I've stuffed around it with some wadding. So that just keeps that um, secure. It's not going to come out at all. And I've just done this one two different ways. So this one I've gone around the edge and left the edges raw like so. 
just sewn um, a back stitch around them. These ones, they actually turn the edges in. This one was a little bit more complicated because of the shape as well. Slow stitching is supposed to be about the process and enjoying the feel of the fabric. So um, if it gets a bit too complicated and you start getting cross with it, you're not doing slow stitching. It's supposed to be nice and gentle and relaxing and mindful. So um, just keep it as simple as you can. It does look really great like this. Um, this is how slow stitching is supposed to be. So just bear that in mind when you're making something that you don't make it too complicated. So sticking with stuffed shapes, just one more thing um, to show you for those. And these ones are in a bag because this is for the cat. So I've made some cat toys and they've got catnip in them and Ginger Cat is sitting just behind the camera and I don't want to make in a mess of the tables. So I'm going to get them out and hopefully it won't make him go mad. So I've got two cats, so I've made two cat toys. I made one for Ginger Cat and one for Little Pinky Cat. And these are super simple as well. And these are quite soft, so not as much stuffing as the pincushion has got in them because they're going to grab them and they're going to play with them and they're going to kick them and throw them around the garden, hopefully. And I've just made these in a long piece of fabric and I folded it here. I've stitched it up the side across the top, put some wadding in it. And this is just the bias, uh, the edge of a piece of fabric the selvage that I've cut off and don't throw them away they make great tails on the cat and I've put some catnip inside and I've got some catnip spray as well he's not showing any attention so I think we're all right um and um just to think about with cat toys is obviously they're going to have them in their mouth so you don't want anything in there that they're going to be able to bite off and swallow so no sequins no beads no extra little bits on these um small stitches as well so there's not big long threads on them and um they're going to get well worn so just think about that when you decorate them so i've just done some very simple decorating on these and i'm going to try these out later i'm going to get slightly more technical now but only slightly because it's still about the slow stitching it's still about the mindfulness but i want to show you this lovely little purse that i made and i found these fittings on the internet i'll put a link below to where i got those from and once you find these fittings there's all sorts of beautiful things that you can try i've got a couple more to show you as well um so it's just that part there the open and close uh, clasp there but the actual stitching is super simple I just drew this myself I drew half of it fold it over and draw around the other half so you get a symmetrical shape and it's just two pieces that shape and it's got inside a little bit of wadding so I put some of that fleece inside that I used for the face pads just to give that a little bit of extra structure and then I did my slow piece on top and then I've just got a lining of some cotton plain cotton inside there and I've made all those I've just buttonholed around the edge so no turning in no fancy seams or anything like put the two together just buttonhole around the edge once I've done my slow stitching I'll just show you the other side because they're different and then I've just sewn it into the handle it's just a back stitch through the holes along the top and then I made myself a little beaded handle so it's getting a little bit more complex now but if you've got a lot of sewing skills you won't find this hard at all and you um, you can look up some of these beautiful clasps that they have and you can make something really special so taking the bag theme um, again and just making something very similar out of it. I've made myself a phone case, just have something a little bit different here. And I've got this beautiful catch on the front, this little bee, and that just lifts up and that lifts off. Again, I'll link that in the description below. I wanted to try that clasp out. But the stitching again is simple. So just one piece on the front, one rectangular piece on the front, a longer one on the back that I have folded over here. So don't put anything on the part that's going to fold over. You need to be able, that needs to be able to crease. Um, just made those separately, buttonholed all the way around the edge to put them together. Some nice decoration on the front. You can go a little bit mad with your decoration. Bone fits inside like so. And that clasp folds shut so something really special to put your phone in. I'm going to go downscale a little bit now and I've made this lovely watch strap. Now I found this watch to do just this to make your own watch strap with ages and ages ago. I think I got it from somewhere in the US when I was there so I'm sorry I don't know where I got this from but I'm sure if you search just watch faces you'll find plenty of these and I've just made the little straps to go with it so 
just a long piece of felt. I've got a little bit here. It's quite a thick felt, this one, but you could just double a couple of normal pieces of felt together if you wanted to, or use some fabric. You can use anything you like for that. But I just wanted something a little bit stiff and a little bit sturdier for this. And I've done my decoration on it, put some lace on it, and then just layered some of this fabric on the top. This is another piece of fabric. Put these little black stitches in just to tie the watch face in with the handle. So little details like that can be really fun. And then just to fix it to the watch, I've just gone through the loop and sewn it down so really really simple to do that and then I've put some little prestards on the back as well so I can just join it up like so and that's my watch face there and while we're talking about this I want to show you the next one as well because it's related and you can make some bangles or some bracelets or some wrist cuffs or whatever you would like to call those and um, I've made one to go with the watch so if you don't have a watch face but you like that idea you can just make a simple one that um just goes around your wrist, decoration around your wrist. So I've done it that matches the watch here. So I've done the same fabrics. Um, again, I've used the felt, but you could use um, anything. I'll show you a couple more in a second. And that's just got a fitting on it as well. So that matches the watch. I'll just show you these ones to show you what else you can do with it. This one is on a violin, pelmet violin, which is used to make curtains, the tops of curtains. And I've just done a piece of fabric on that. This has got shisha mirrors on it, some buttons and a little bit of stitching on there. Just very simple kinds of stitching. So whatever stitching you know, you can include it in your slow stitching. There's no rules about what you can include and what you can't. And I've just got some little Velcro circles on there just to hold that together and make that little cuff there and I'm just going to show you one more this is an old one actually which I found which I thought oh this is perfect but something a little bit different um, and I've got some lace on the back now just a wide band of lace there another piece of lace on top a bit of leather a bit of ribbon some more leather some steampunk parts it's a little bit steampunky this one um, and just sewn through the leather there and put some little extra details on and again that one just fits around your wrist like so so you can have a lot of fun with making some jewellery so I hope you're enjoying these ideas that I'm showing you and you've got some inspiration of your own and we're going to stick with the jewellery now we're going to go back to Amanda because Amanda has made these lovely little brooch pins and she saw in the video that I made the book cover that I showed you previously with the um, old broken bits of jewellery on it and Amanda's taken that idea and she's made the jewellery out of the slow stitching so she's kind of done it the other way around and she's made these beautiful little pieces. They're very small, so it's great for using up those really small scraps of fabric. You can put buttons on there and beads on there and all sorts of things. And she's just stitched them over a pin. This looks like a kilt pin that she's used. You could use a very large paper clip. You can get some lovely designer paper clips, anything like that, or a brooch backing or something like that, and just make some really personal pieces of jewellery going to do the next two together because they are connected so you don't have to make a whole new thing out of your slow stitching you can use your slow stitching to decorate something so I've got here a napkin and a napkin holder and I'll show you the holder in a second because this is my napkin and I've just decorated the bottom that's it Ta -da. the bottom corner of it like so and if you had all your napkins the same colour, you could put a different decoration on each one and then people would know which one was theirs. And I've used those same fabrics. So a very simple piece of slow stitching. I just laid a few fabrics together um, and a ribbon down the middle and stitched those together. And then I've used that same colour theme to make my little napkin ring. <clears throat> I've used again that thick felt, but you could just use some normal felt or some fabric, but I just wanted to give it a bit of structure. I'm just going to unwrap that so you can see that. So it's just a rectangular piece like so in the same fabrics that I have used on the napkin so that they match. And I have put the ribbon down the middle and I've carried the ribbon on and I can just wrap the ribbon round. And then I've just turned it over and sewn it together on the back to cover up the back. We could put a felt backing on it. And then that just goes around in a circle around the napkin. And you can just tuck that in to close it. And you've got a matching napkin and napkin ring. The last thing that I want to show you has been on the wall behind me the whole time it's been up here is my bunting. I've got a whole video on how I made the bunting. We will put that up for you in the corner as well if you want to see how I did that. Really, really easy to make that one. Just little triangles with some slow stitching on. Use up all of those leftover bits or those little bits that you've been hanging around and they're lovely and you don't want to throw them away. You think, what can I do with them? You can make some party bunting with them. So do go and check that video out. 
So there's 20 things that you can make with your slow stitching pieces. If you have some other ideas and you have made some other things, do let me know in the comments below and we'll see we can make that list a little bit longer. And if you would like to get into slow stitching, you want to know more about it, do check out our slow stitching playlist that's up over here. We've got some videos on how to do it and we've got some projects as well. And as usual, if you have enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up. That would be really appreciated and we will see you next time.